This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New Orleans Saints. With that, let's get over to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with the call from New Orleans. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? Here's Will Lutz ready to get this one started. And we are underway from the Superdome. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They're led onto the field by a man who needs no introduction, Ben Roethlisberger. We talk so often about his physical attributes. Of course, the Big Ben nickname, his ability to take hits in the pocket, his ability to extend plays and get outside of the pocket. But how about this for efficiency? Top 10 in career NFL passer rating. And he's one of the top five winning his quarterbacks in NFL history. That's pretty darn good. Now Roethlisberger on first down. This one complete right side to McDonald. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. First carry for James Conner, and he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. Out wide was the youngest player in the NFL in 2017, Juju Smith-Schuster. And he also had the longest reception in the league last season at 97 yards. Actually well-schooled in route running, and able to run from both outside and moving inside to the slot position in order to make big plays. On third down, that's Connor, and he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. This will be fielded at the 17, and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Almost out kicked his coverage there. 48-yard punt, but 10 on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 27. Ready. We're waiting. The first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down 11 yards on that pickup. 
And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said, write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Roethlisberger will hand the counter. And bulldozing his way through. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. First opportunity for the Steelers in the red zone. They've got a first and goal from the 10 yard line. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked, but instead they'll keep it on second down. And now a look at the Saints starting defense. When you're drafted 12th overall, people expect big things out of you, and Sheldon Rankins can provide that big, strong, physical player, has excellent quickness, and is really good with his hands, keeping blockers off of him and allowing him to get upfield and into opposing backfields. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And he showed up a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. The crowd here in the dome making things difficult. Third and goal. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A great play there. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A drive there of just four plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Breeze to throw on second down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Ready. Throwing on first down is Breeze. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. On first down, Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And it's second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Second and 10 now from the 27. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. Looking again for Thomas, this time complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. A first opportunity upcoming in the red zone for the Saints. They've got a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. Stephon Tewitt's game continues to gain notice and respect. He's a long, long defensive end, but has great ability to bend and get leverage, can take on blockers at the point of attack, and also show skill in rushing the passer. You mentioned he's long, 6'7", over 315 pounds. Man, he is huge. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Ready. 
Shotgun now for Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. They've gotten it to the one. Can they get that final yard here on third and goal? Ready. You ready? They'll run it with Kamara. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. He lost two, and it brings up four. Brandon, it's a situation like this where a head coach writes himself a note before the game. Remember, it's a long game. You don't have to chase points early. But on the other hand, it's a huge disappointment if you only come away with three after a big drive. Let's see what he decides to do. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. And Lutz's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens, because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 26. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. He takes this for three to the 29. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his big tight end there, Jesse James. And that'll make it third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, good play. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Brown, his first catch. It's a first down. And connection number one there on the game, Roethlisberger to Boney Tony. Antonio Brown, that's what his high school teammates used to call him. I wonder what they would call him now. <laughs> more muscular, more successful Boney Tony Brown, right? <laughs> I'd say you're probably right. He may be all of that. I'll still call him Boney Tony, but Ben Roethlisberger calls him my number one target. Connor. 
And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you've said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And McDonald here over the middle. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation down. post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. And they'll run it here. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. He's going to get it running right. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. here in the dome making things difficult third and goal out of the gun it's Roethlisberger under pressure down he goes sacked at the 10 Sheldon Rankins in there to drop him for a four yard loss and it'll be fourth down there's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Boswell's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. 
That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. To throw, it's Breeze. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On second down, Kamara, and he stopped immediately there. It's Big Vince Williams who made the tackle. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something hey, to them between the no second lady. and the third level. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And Ginn's got it. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Breeze now on first down. Completes this one to Meredith. And now running right through it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. Just the first quarter of a tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and worrying all off season about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game and the relief was incredible. Ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, <laughs> it would have been, been a different a story. long night. Breeze now. Already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. To throw is Breeze. Looking long for Thomas. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A gain of 32 that time. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So 
So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Hey, hey, hey. Ready. You ready? Into the red zone, it's Breeze. He hits his target, left side, Watson. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That throw good for four, it's second down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Breeze to throw again. This is caught. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn from 13 yards out. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well, they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Will Lutz on for the point after. Lutz good on the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. So this drive spans seven plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now it's Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Here's Connor. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Getting the sense Charles are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. 
They run with Connor. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second and nine to start things out. unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day and the Steelers on third down they've hit two for four thus far this will be third and five Here's Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. <laughs> he definitely wants that one back. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Again on second and 10, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Brown. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and three. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. And he finds McDonald. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Roethlisberger now 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. And they'll go on the ground, and he'll get this one down to about the 17. Big Sheldon Rankin's there to bring him down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, 
these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. To throw here, Roethlisberger. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And the athleticism on the spin move allows him to pick up the first before he's brought down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Laundry on the field. This is going to be a false start on the offense. Sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things false get start. heated. Offense. The cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. On third and goal, Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Boswell's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. That drive just seemed to go for an eternity. I could kind of hear our sponsors saying, hey, we need to get our product pushed here. <laughs> but then it ends in a field goal. Yeah, how about that? Not enough time for product placement, but plenty of time to get three points out of the deal. <laughs> I know that the guys on defense, though, they wanted to get those products out there. They wanted to stop that drive, just were unable to do so. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. Wait. He'll be looking for that Wait. second touchdown now. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On first and ten, here's Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Okay. Off the play fake to Kamara, it's Breeze. And he's going to be grabbed and pulled down. Javon Hargrave never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack He's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Shotgun now for Breeze. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Here we go. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He dumps it down to Ingram. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that's going to make it fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Lutz puts this one through. And that's going to tie us at 13. 
No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they work this well up field across the 45. 23 yards on the play. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Set. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. Roethlisberger now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Set! Black 30. Black 30. On second down, Roethlisberger. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a third down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use no, no. to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. 
On third down, Roethlisberger. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from 53. And he missed it. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll strike the drive at the 43. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And an alley to run. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Breeze to throw on second down. Rush coming and he's taken down. How about that one of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on? That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Ready. 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 From the gun, it's Breeze. He'll let it fly in the direction. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. Well, I tell you, Brandon, this ball's intercepted, but it is third down. So the silver lining is that since this is so far down the field and there wasn't a big run back associated with it, really this kind of works like a punt. It's not an altogether bad result. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Yeah, a little time? closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They 
They start with a give to Connor. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. This one complete, right side to McDonald. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Steelers on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This time it's third and three. Now Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Quick slant there, gets him the first down, six yards on the play. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. and 10. It's Roethlisberger. Over the middle. Hauled in by Smith-Schuster. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Throw left side complete, it's James. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Ben to throw again. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's James. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Roethlisberger coming up with a first and ten. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. To throw again is Roethlisberger. He'll fight a man over the middle. It's Washington. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime.
Roethlisberger now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. Again, it's Roethlisberger. This will be caught just inside the 10. Showed off the juke, but still corralled shy of the five at the six-yard line. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And it's caught. It's Brown. Touchdown, Steelers. Antonio Brown from six yards away. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Extra point now by Boswell. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. To return it, Alvin Kamara. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game. Probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best torch, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. Final 17 seconds of the half here as they come up to the line, first and 10. Ready, yellow lady. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Give the tackle there to Morgan Burnett. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. In the game you've been watching, it was Ben Roethlisberger who led the way offensively in the first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Breeze now 14 out of 17, 82%, and it's first and 10. Now Breeze. He hits his target, left side, Watson. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Ready, yellow lady. From midfield, here's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Gill. And he'll get it down here to the 43. He had their lone TD earlier. Now he's got a first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. and 10 here's breeze and that is incomplete here he was trying to get it to his running back alvin Kamara, and that'll bring up second down so they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression just trying to find his outlet man that time ends up leading him just a bit too much here we go so second down still 10 yards to go ball on the 43 A tenth carry for Kamara. Dropped at the 35, but he was able to display the agility there. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. The Saints on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and two. Ready. We're waiting. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from 53. And 
And this is good. It was running kind of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And that'll bring him back within four. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. the main field goal lets to kick it away this fielded a few yards into the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone and just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive when you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Off the play fake, here's Roethlisberger. Wide open receiver complete. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now Roethlisberger on first down. He's going deep for Brown. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half-field responsibility. Their job stays deep as the deepest receiver in any zone. Read the football and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Line of scrimmage is the eight on second and eight. Again, it's Kamara. And an alley to run. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Okay, let's face it. Most of the offensive linemen in today's NFL, they're going to weigh over 300 pounds. But that doesn't mean they don't have agility. And the way that they can get out in front of a runner and create a space, sometimes it looks like they're going in one direction, and the runner uses his eyes to take him in another direction because it's been blocked so well. Love those misdirection or counter plays, and this one worked really well for a nice piece of yardage. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. Back to back 11 yard gains, and they've got another first down. 
We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So first and 10 now from the 30. They go play action here on first down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Well, Breeze throwing on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Breeze. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open. He finds a way to pick up a first down. Here we go. Breeze now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Ready. Ready. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. Throw left side complete. It's Watson. A gain of six there on first. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. Ready, yellow lady. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Ball start, offense. So that'll back him up five. The false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. Following the penalty, it's Kamara. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Yeah, yeah. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. So out comes the field goal team once more. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And 
Butts' his kick is good. And that'll bring him back within a point. It can be a thankless job sometimes to be a kicker, but they're thanking him right now. That's now four field goals. He's kept him in the game. He sure has. That offense has got to find its rhythm because I'm not sure that just kicking field goals is going to allow them to win this game. the main field goal Lutz to kick it away that's fielded in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line getting set to go again Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there and he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. The drive will start with Connor. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Here's second and seven now from the 28. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Wait, we stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to them the rest of the game. The Steelers on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Brown. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route, He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is taken at about the 14. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they've made some good adjustments, though. He's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. Four down, four down. Ready. Breeze now on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, the tight end. And now it's second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And that one blown up quickly, as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll be a third and about 13. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. 
The Saints on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Ready. Ready. From the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. A big play, Breeze finding Thomas, 46 yards. It's bad enough watching all the highlight reels, watching guys in warm-ups going up and making these incredible one-handed acrobatic catches. But when it happens right in front of you, when you're defending him, that just makes your day that much longer, and you just wonder, how are we ever going to cover these guys? So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now a handoff. Here's Kamara. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. it again with Kamara and he will cross the 30 down to the 29 yard line call it about a gain of three and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up so where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here someone made some adjustments it appears at least on this drive the 22 is the line to gain here on third down Now Breeze. That's complete to Meredith. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. All the yards, completions, just another play that's a feather in the cap of the great career of Drew Breeze. And wasn't he supposed to be too small to be an effective quarterback in yeah. the NFL? Yeah, how'd that work out? Yeah, well, his footwork, I think, really sets him apart. Remember, he was a junior tennis champion. Beat Andy Roddick, the future U.S. Open champion, back when they were in the juniors. I think that footwork really helps him be the great quarterback he is now. Ready. Yellow waiting, yellow waiting. They'll run here with Ingram. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Mark Ingram, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Now Breeze will bring the Saints offense up to go for two here. Ready. Ready. There's Breeze. And he is going to go down at the 11-yard line. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage, just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. Lutz now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. And he's probably wondering, how do I get that mojo back from the first half that he seems to have lost a little bit here in the third quarter? And every guy has his whisperer on the team. You know, that one guy who can say things to him that other people can't. 
right now he's looking for that guy to kind of, hey, we're good. We're good. One interception. Just get it back. Get back to being who you are. And this team will be okay. Yeah, because they led at halftime, trailing now. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Again, it's Connor. Muscles him off. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Tackle there by Alex Anzalone. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. Over the middle here to Brown. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. And there's a man they call A.B., always a volume receiver. He gobbles up catches. Holds a number two and number four spots for most receptions in a season in NFL history. And in 2015, just seven catches shy of setting the single season mark for most receptions, currently held by Marvin Harrison, a Hall of Famer. And he had 136 catches that year on the heels of 129 the season before. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. On first and 10, it's Roethlisberger toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there, but they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. 
On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. It's complete to Brown, right side. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On third and one, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Jalen Samuels, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, hey, you're so right, because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. So a big play now as the Steelers will go for two. They're going to try and run. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they've upped their lead to three. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's Bree's to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch.
They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Ready. Ready. Breeze to throw on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. That was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. First down is Breeze. And Watson has it right side. The completion good for three and it's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. First down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Ready, yellow lady. Breeze to throw again. Finds a seam inside the 40. Over the middle, that's caught by Meredith. And all the way down to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. He's going to come up here first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Ready. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Over the middle to Smith, and he'll go down at the 28. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Again, it's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. gun and he stopped immediately there no gain on the play there second down well, a well executed blitz no doubt great job by the linebacker maybe the quarterback if he could have seen that could have audible there yeah he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense all the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle and he made a great tackle so the offense a little antsy, the flag comes out, and a five-yard penalty. False start, offense. And that'll set him back five. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15.
Throwing now is Breeze. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. And a nice gain of 21 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Ready! Yellow lady, yellow lady! One shot! One shot! They'll look to run with Ingram. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They'll give it to him up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Ball start, offense. That well, was a third and somewhat manageable, now not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you gotta start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you wanna throw it. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. to throw it's breeze and it's caught and he'll be brought down here at the three yard line they wind up with six on the hook up there but it's not enough fourth and goal well you know me pretty well now you know what i want to do after that completed pass fourth down down by three what do i want to do here uh, you want to go for it you might be tempted i think they need to kick it yeah someone might have to overrule me get the kicker out there tie this game up this one through and in the fourth quarter this game is tied so yet another field goal to end the drive that has been a very common theme he's now hit five of them in this game yeah Brandon as an offense you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often but you have to love the fact that time and time again he's come through Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block but they're helping out, too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Yes, 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Third down. That's Connor. Whoosh. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 47. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. In on the tackle, Alex Okafor. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. And they'll run it here. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Now it's Roethlisberger. He's going to let this one go deep. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Jesse James, 42 yards. And the Steelers are going to take the lead. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Boswell for the extra point. Boswell good with the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at their own 27. Right, lady. Shotgun now for Bree's. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 
And they work this well upfield across the 45. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Okay. Everyone dialed in. On first and ten, here's Breeze. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. T.J. Watt in there to sack him for a loss of six. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. What, he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Bree's going to throw. They go screen. This is Ingram. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the gun, it's Breeze. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They run. It's Kamara. And the surge is going to be too much defensively. He's hit and taken down to the backfield. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. They have the lead. Still a one-possession game, but the defense got to the stop. They've got the football now. Just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now starting to take their tape off. And, <laughs> hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away, and that means ball security. Absolutely. Stranger things have happened. And on the ground they go with a running back. 
And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. And they'll go on the ground. And yeah, the Saints signal for another timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Third down. That's Connor. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Delay of game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Roethlisberger dropping to a knee, and that ought to do it. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. 
He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. He'll field this at the five. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.